Ruchim Abayim, good to see you all. What a beautiful crowd tonight. Baruch Hashem, welcome to the new agenda. Welcome everyone, whoever is watching us out there, whoever is joining us tonight. I'd like to dedicate this class to the Nefuat Heaven in Ota Batchen Chana, and Atzagat Asika Besa, that sponsored the Shiu, and Atzagat Mendy Fisher, and all Am Israel. And Bezad Hashem, tonight, we're going to have a special, special class that this is basically the continuation of the classes that we spoke last few weeks about how we can release ourselves from Egypt mindset. And tonight we're going to learn about financial and relationship that this is basically combined and connected together we will learn tonight how can we free ourselves and let ourselves to be in a place that outside of Egypt, in a place that we're not stressful so much and working like a dog. We are not in the place that we stress, that we blame, that we in a place that we sad and depressed and we don't feel our freedom. To that, we will learn about the financial. How can we release our mindset to receive more, much more shefa, much more abundance, not to live with, from paycheck to paycheck, not from, a, a, you know, when you're stressed for all day long, how you pay your bills, your rent, your mortgage, uh, your car insurance, and all the other bills that come in every single day. How can we find the right person that can be that can be in my life, that can help me and support me, and not to be... There's, uh, there's no Perfect, it's good. There. And vitals are good. On mute. Put good everyone job. on mute, please. <laughs> everyone on Thank mute. Thank you. So, the reason that we... We're going to speak about it because each one of us, when we learn and we celebrate Pesach and we left Egypt by physically, by mentally, that we learned before, emotionally and spiritually last time, I want to summarize in one minute what we spoke until, to, uh, until tonight. We spoke about how can we release our mindset to believe more, to extend more, to uh, even push ourselves and extend ourselves to see the possibilities. How can I free myself from this narrow mindset? Because Mitzrayim is not just a physical place. Mitzrayim is a metaphor of a place that we don't feel ourselves. It's a place that we cannot express ourselves. It's a place that we always being around our tail in the loop that we feel that someone control me, someone don't let me expand myself, someone make me sad, or in a place that we feel a victim, in a place that we blame others, place that we don't, don't take accountability, in a place that we cannot feel that we, we're doing in the, or growing in the progress, we feel unhappy, depressed, postulated, and stress all day long. This is Mitzrayim. This is Mitzrayim. And the reason that Hashem wants us to get out of Egypt and remind ourselves on this thing every single day, I am your God that took you out of Egypt at that time and today. And you have the ability to choose to go out of Egypt. So it's not enough to go out of Egypt physically because you're still in Egypt, even you're not there physically. By your mindset that you feel, I'm not worthy enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not love enough. Nobody care about me. Hashem don't care about me. It's impossible. You have no connection to Hashem. You full of averot and sin and to and unpureness that you don't know how to get out. You don't feel any connection spiritually with Hashem. You don't have any any relationship. You don't even feel that you can pray and can cry and can develop any kind of relationship. That's what it's like. So we spoke on the last classes how we can. Release ourselves mentally and physically and 
spiritually out of Egypt. Tonight we're going to talk about relationship and financial. That this is two things that the most important in every person's life. And that we're going to, going to connect that also to when Hashem opened the ocean and Hashem, it was hard to Hashem to open the ocean like to open our gate for Parnassai and Zivu. It's always come together. How and what is the connection between Parnassai and relationship? Why so many people suffering all day long from relationship? They want to get someone that's going to love them. They want to get their shiduch. They feel if I'm going to find my soulmate, they're going to find the right girl or the right guy, I'm going to be happy. Right? They're going to a date. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, he's so amazing. Or they, they try to date or whatever, and then something happened. No, I hate this guy. He's so, so stupid. How can I date? I will spend my time, spend my money, waste my money, waste my time, and, and it's not working. And if he, even you got engaged and you got married and you think, when I got married, I'm going to be so happy. And bum, 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 bum. we <laughs> fighting for stupid things. You find yourself fighting for stupid things. Miscommunication, misunderstanding. She, this girl, she's crazy. Rabbi, I can't handle it anymore. She don't understand what I want. You don't understand. She can't even fulfill my needs. She can't even that. She can't even that. I want, I, I, Rabbi, I want to get out. I want to run away. Some of the people, they just check out. They run away. And every single day, couples come to my office. In a place that they want to quit, they find, Rabbi, let me go and exit. I want to get now. Now I want to get. Or a woman, she's suffering. She don't have any connection. She don't feel that her husband is in alignment with her. And you don't feel anything, any kind of connection. And even they're living together, they like two partners. They don't really love each other. And even the love and they like each other, like in two partners, a roommate in the house. Whatever, there's food, there's that, what you clean, what that. It's all, it's, all, it's all the routine. It's not any kind of deep connection. What is that? Why most of the people suffer into their relationship? Most of the people. And we have seven, above 70% of rate of divorce. Why people want to get married even? Are you serious? If I'm going to tell you that <laughs> there is a company that whoever invests this company fell and got broken and God destroyed his life. He would have invested a dollar in this company. So why people want to get married? Are you serious? You have to go to psychiatry. I'm I willing to pay for it if you want for a session. Like, what's wrong with you? To get married? No, I'm not telling you not to get married. Not to get married without learning, without getting educated, without coming to Rabbi Lassie for eight session. And to, yeah, or to sign up for my relationship course. So, so what's wrong? And you see the people getting married and they don't know what they're doing. And, and, and it's very, very, I'm not saying that if you learn or if you have the education, it's, it's, it's easy, right? We all have a lot of um, challenges and there's a lot of craziness going on. But what is the key for a healthy relationship? And how can we learn it from time? And relationship connect for financial, because if you have a good relationship, you also have abundance in Parnassa. You don't have a good relationship. You don't know how to overcome your, your midot, your, your, your emotion, yourself. You're not getting out of your comfort zone. Everything falling apart. There's no Parnassa. There's no nothing. And everything got stuck. Right? What, like the Gemara said, if you have a good relationship, you respect your wife. You have a good panasa. How come there's a lot of people that respect their wife and they still don't have panasa? And I know a lot of people that don't respect their wife and they have a lot of money. <laughs> right? So we're going to learn what is the key for good panasa, for good income and abundance. I'm not talking about making two, three, five, six, ten thousand. I'm making about, I'm talking, this is just. Survival mode, right? Just to pay bills. I'm talking about really 
Parnasa, that you feel that Hashem is with you, is give you and fulfill you whatever you need. Everything for our bodies that you, above that, that you feel really like, like the Torah said, Vacharechen itzu berchush gadol. Hashem promised to Abraham Avinu, I'm telling you, you have the questions about me, how are you going to get the promised land? I'm going to tell you that you have to go inside Egypt and train yourself. Your children will be there for 400 years. But even they're going to suffer, I promise you they're going to get out with a lot of money. And each one of our Israel left Egypt with, with 90 donkeys full of diamonds and gold. What do you need 90 donkeys in the desert? When no, but there's no malls over there. There's no sofas. What, what are you going to do with all this money? How much, how much diamonds do you have? How much you want to train for what? You have the same clothes. Would you have the same clothes? And the clothes growing up with you for 40 years. The same shoes for 1936. So what do you need? Money. Because money changes your mindset. When you have money, you don't feel slave. When you have money, you feel like a power. You feel freedom. You feel a kind of an energy that there is a, a difference between a person that have a million dollars and a person that have a hundred thousand dollars. It's not just about the money. It's a different animal, a different man, right? It's a different mentality, right? You feel different. It's not like whoever make more or less. It's a different mentality. So tonight we will learn how we can get there, how we can free ourselves, even you're not gonna make a million dollar, but at least you can free yourself and feel a little bit above what the circumstance and the, the, the places that you are mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, and relationship, okay? So what do you want to start from relationship or financial? <laughs> a man, financial, give me the money. <laughs> okay, relationship. So the girls win. <laughs> like, please, Rabbi, I need to know what to do with that. So, <laughs> so we we'll learn in the last few classes the difference of mindset. What's the difference between people who live in Egypt, people who left Egypt? And tonight, so let's start from the relationship to see whoever is living in Egypt. What's the problem? What is the problem to be in Egypt? And how can you free yourself? So first of all, in order to leave Egypt or to have the tools or the map or the GPS, the address how to leave Egypt, first of all, you have to be aware that you're in Egypt. I ask people, how are you? I'm okay. How's your relationship? Yeah, I'm okay. Sure. Ah, uh, listen. I mean, not perfect. In, oh, it's, it's just not perfect. I have a conversation today with someone. And I was amazed, like, always, like, pretending like they're okay and everything okay and everything okay. But then with that, I realized they're totally not okay. So first of all, in order to release yourself or to start to understand, you have to know what is that? Where are you right now? To make a list where I am right now, even... If you married right now, or even you're looking for Shiduch, maybe you're also looking for Shiduch or Zivug or you soulmate, or you want to get married or remarried after you got divorced, whatever any stage in life that you are, you have to understand how to even attract the relationship, the future relationship. Because if you're in Egypt, you're going to get Egyptian guy, right? You're going to get Egyptian girl. Right? That you don't want to get Egyptian girl. Right? <laughs> Not because she's a Jet, because you have a mindset of a Jet. So who is those people who live in Egypt? Those people who live in Egypt, they're always complaining. Number one, they're always complaining and they never appreciate what they have. Number one, in order to have and release yourself and to build a healthy relationship, is to be in the place that first of all you know who are you and what you capable of and what you're doing in a daily basis. If you're a person that always complaining, 
and not appreciate what you have right now when you're going to have a relationship or when you see a lot of things in in your spouse, you're not going to see anything because always it's about me. We we'll learn that the people who live in Egypt, it's all me, time. It's all about me. Who cares about her? Whatever I care about you, it's because I want something. I really love you, honey. I buy you a flower, buy you a mother day, I buy you a mother day, and after five minutes, he fight with her, right? So people who live in Egypt, they're always about me. And this is the first key to know that the relationship is not about me, it's about we. Always I'm asking people, what is the reason that you want to stay with this person? What is the reason that you want to get married? Oh, listen, I want to have kids, I want someone to take care of me, I want to have that, I want to have someone to have money. Of course, uh, someone come with a Tesla, and not Tesla, with something a little bit much more. And they make me a list. I said, oh, that's the reason. It, so it's a business. It's a business uh, <laughs> plan. It's not, <laughs> you don't want to get married. If I'm going to give you all of that without this person, you're willing to, to, to together? Yeah, maybe yes. Yeah, if you're going to give me so much income, yeah, maybe. Well, what do you need all, all this package? So people not really getting married in the right way. They get married in order to get, get, get. But if you get married in order to get, eventually you're going to get get. Right? You're going to get get. And very big get. And <laughs> big get, nasty get, fighting, screaming. Who knows? And if you have kids, it's a world war free. Right? So... So first of all, me, Slime, how do you, can you get out of me? First of all, it's the tzaddik coming after me. What is the tzaddik? Mean needs, tzrachim. If you want to get out of Egypt, those people who live in Egypt, it's all about me. They're not aware of the needs of the other person. I don't know what you need. I mean, I don't know what my wife wants. I don't know what she's crying. Like a baby, was she fighting for stupid things? Was she not on the land? I mean, Allah's the beat. Allah's shake. Be quiet. Right? Did you ever ask her what's going on with her? Did you ever ask her why she's sad? Why she's depressed? Why she's not happy? Why he depressed? Why he is not participant? Why he's not cooperating? Uh, but we don't know because we don't care. So first of all, in order to get out of me, slime. If you're taking the tzaddik from the word Mitzrayim, if you're taking the tzaddik, this is the needs of your wife or the needs of your husband or your future or the needs of yourself. You don't even know what you need. And you don't know why you getting upset and why you foster it. Before that, you were... People said, before I got married, I was so happy, so light, and so appreciate, so laughing with all my friends, and so, but when I got married, I'm like, I'm like, feel so depressed. Like, she's on me, she, or he is on me, he's like, drive me crazy, I can't expand myself. It's not supposed to be like that. Marriage is supposed to expand you, and uplifting, and supporting each other. People said, I just want to get out of this relationship to feel free. They feel in a cage because they never get on a tzaddik. If you get in the tzaddik, you get in the needs. You know what's the needs of the other person. And you making the list instead of what I want to get in the relationship, what I want to give. I want to make sure that you have 10 things that you want to get married in order to give. Uh, they give, um, then they start to have to scratch their head. Well, what do you mean to give? <laughs> Who wants to give? Life is all about me, right? I'm selfish. <laughs> I want to give. What should I give? Okay, I give you in order to get. Because a lot of people, even people when they give tzedakah, they want to get something. Hashem, I give. Hey, where is the money? Right? So you're not really give, you get. <laughs> it's all about giving and get. So, if you want to get uplifting and have a healthy relationship, you have to take the tzaddik, the tzrachim, the needs, and put it in front of you. What is really 
What is the last time I sit down with my husband or with someone in the date? How can I serve you, honey? How can I share? How can I support you? How? What is the really need? What's going on in your life? People have, don't have this conversation. Only about politics, only about uh, what's happening in Israel, about cars, about vacations, about stupid things that distract them from the suffering and pain that they're going through. Or they meet each other even for six, seven years. Or for six, seven months, they do not even know each other. I ask people, are you aware? They're not aware. So when you take the tzaddik, what is the words that you have from Mitzrayim and Merim? Hashem is uplifting you because the reason that Hashem wants us to get married is to be like God. That's the only way that Hashem dwells with Shechina. Hashem brings the Shechina among you. When you become like God by giving, Hashem brings the Shechina. And then you have Shlomat, you have a peace. But if it's all about you, you're so selfish, it's okay. So stay, stay by yourself. If you want to prepare yourself for the future, husband, be a giver. Be someone that's taking care of others. Change your mentality and your ability always. If, because if you, it's all about you, you're always going to be in survival mode all the time. All the time. Whoever is not giver in a daily basis, weekly basis, always going to be in survival mode all the time. All the time problems. But when you take care of other people's problems, your problems, Hashem, solve it somehow. It's a, it's a magic. So this is the first thing. To get out of a me, to take care of the needs of the, each other, to get out of the place that you are a victim. Because you, if you are a victim, all the time, it's, it's all about his problem. It's all about her. She's driving me crazy. So <coughs> One time a lady came to me and she said, I don't know what's wrong with my husband. I want to get divorced. He don't care. He's not there. Having, you, know, you don't want to, yeah, he never hugged me, he never he kissed me, he never do that, he never do that, he never, he should give me all the 30 lists, like what he's not doing. Yeah, what are you doing? Why is he not doing it? Uh, listen, what, what, what are you missing in the game? And then I realized five questions and asked her, and then she said, yeah, I'm the worst wife ever. <laughs> so you thinking that this, this is his problem because you're not aware what you're not doing wrong. So if you're aware of the buttons, what's going on? It's all simple. If you read, if you know what's going on in people's life, you understand what and how can I I serve more. But if you're not ready to serve, you don't care about nobody, uh, just about yourself, and you have a sad face all the time, complaining, feel a victim, you're in Egypt. Right? Because only when you get out of Egypt, you're starting to sing, starting to be appreciated. In Egypt, it's only a mindset of a slave that you are all the time feel that you are depressed and you don't have time to breathe even. You're always stressed. You're always stressed. So what is the avodat parish that happened in Egypt? What is the really work that Amsla did? People think that they carry a lot of heavy stuff. And they were sweating. No, 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 no. The Midrash said, the Midrash said something very interesting. He said that the Paro knew the system. So in the beginning, he prepared, he pretended like he's helping and he's doing, yeah, let's build the pyramids together. But what is the actual work? He took a bunch of women and he told them, you going to do the work for a man. And he took a bunch of men and he told them, you're going to do the job of a woman. Well, what do you mean? You're going to need to wash the floor. What if you come and ask a man, what do you prefer to do? Build the pyramids or wash the floor? <laughs> yes, where's the man over here? Well, what, what, do you, what, what are you willing to do? Wash the floor, wash the dishes, change diapers or build the building, right? But, um, there's a man in the, in the, in the place here, right? <laughs> what? Well, what, what did the woman actually design to do? Change diapers, wash the dishes, take care of the house, cooking, or building? Today, I don't know, today it's a little bit different because today I also 
see a woman that work <laughs> with the business like as a man. But, but what is that with that parish? Because he knows that if I change the person's energy to be a masculine instead of being a feminine, you destroy the relationship. You destroy the person. And that's the key that destroyed the relationship to so many places. What is the things that can change a woman to be a masculine? Like a man. These are three things. And remember, we talk about it many times about relationships. These three things, three C's that make you as a woman be like a man. These are three C's. If you control him, your husband, where are you going? What are you doing? Show me your phone. Who is talking? Who's calling? Oh, he didn't tell me. Hey, what did you do? Come on time. Ah, oh, he didn't tell me. Come on eight o'clock. Why are you coming at nine? Oh, what did you do? Oh, can I check the GPS? Show me the Google history. Show me the GPS history. Show me the, the, the uh, what? What? Relax. Leave me alone. Are you got to be kidding me? Why are you my mom? What? I can't even go whatever I want. Must say, you checking my history, you checking the you know, the only thing that a man cleaning the house is the history of the internet. This is the only thing that is clean. So, but it's a joke. <laughs> but, but when you feel control, when you control, you lose your feminine. You become a masculine. When you become a masculine, a man look at you as another man in the house. If he's not, mm -hmm. so he's not going to be attracted to you. Right? Unless he's living in Vegas. So, but, so if you are having these C's controlling, second C is criticizing. You're coming with the RPG. You don't care about me. You don't live in What do you have? I don't have money. I don't have that. You drive me crazy. You don't help me. You don't support me. What does the man do? Shut the door, get out of it. Or he's running away, or fight, or flight, or freeze. Some of the men like freezing for 45 minutes. He's literally, say something! Say something! You don't see me! I'm crying! He's like a dumb. Not saying anything, like a like stupid dumb person. Say something! You're so apathy! You're so like, like disconnected! He's not like he's disconnected. He sees a man. He sees a snake in front of him. <laughs> he sees a snake coming from the Adam and Eve tree that trying to bite him and swallow him. Right? <laughs> you know that why the snake he got jealous from from Adam and Chava relationship? What do you have in common? He's a snake, she's a human being. Because you have a similarity. He feels like she's also a snake. A little bit. Sometimes, when she's using her masculine power, when she's coming with the RPG, right? So, that's killing the relationship. So, when you have controlling, you have the criticize, and another C is Close. When you close, what happened, honey? Nothing. What happened? Why are, you, why are you depressed? Nothing. Talk to me. Say. What happened? He's always, listen, always the husband feel like he's his fault. Right? Yes or no? Whatever you do, you feel like it, this is your fault. You feel like like you and the, on, the, on the court stage. And always someone on something come to blame you. Right? Yes or no? Because he's always with a gun. She's always armed, right? So that's why you see a man in front of you, you disconnect this depolarization. There's no connection. So don't be surprised that your husband don't want to have any connection, any physical touch, any intimacy, anything with you because I don't want to be with another man in another house, in my house, right? And opposite, when a woman... See your husband like a female. He's like a woman. How? 
How a man can be like a woman? Three un. When she feel ununderstood, he's he's not understand me. Unseen, he don't see me. If you see, you can meet a beautiful husband, a nice guy, but he don't see you. He sees job, he sees work, he sees clients, he sees co-worker, he sees investors. He's all over the place beside you. You the 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 only one on the bottom of the list. He's there only when he needs you. Where's the food? Where time the food? I'm hungry. Now uh, where's the house? Where is that? Come on, get ready. Let's go. Let's. Only when he needs you, he's there, right? But what's wrong with you and what's going on with your life? I have no idea. And you feel like invisible. When you feel invisible, you feel that like he's not understanding. You become a man, right? Because you you see a female in front of you. You see someone that ran away. When he's not understand you, he's un. Seen and unsafe when you feel unsafe. Because a man is supposed to give the support, the safetyness for the house. You don't feel like he, he have the power to handle. Even you crazy. Even you have scratch. Even you have a bullet. Even you shoot out of him. You want to see someone to stand up like a man. And say, honey, I love you. Please forgive me. Right? You know the Oklahoma, right? Sorry, I love you. Please forgive me. What? Please forgive you. Let me shut out. But you stand like a man. She wants to see you like you have a man. But most of the men today, they, they, they don't want to handle it. They run away. Leave me alone. I love you only when you're quiet, like a little puppy. Only when you're sweet. Right? So that's Mitzrayim. When you when you change, when you change the energy, masculine energy and feminine energy, that's all about that part. You are like a slave. When you get out of Egypt, you know how to be like a man, how to provide money, how to provide the safety, the security. You taking care of her. You taking care of her needs. You see her. You respect her. It's all about respect. If you don't respect her or you don't respect your husband, you're actually killing him. I told this woman, you killing your husband every single day. You shoot him in his face. And then he's surprised why he shut down? Surprised why he don't want to be there? When he's running away for nine months? Why he's like all over the place? Of course, you don't want to be there. He's there only because of the kids or because of other things. But you have nothing to do with you, right? He sees you as a threatening. So you have to work in your midot. This is all about the Vodata Midot, working on your characters. But if you want to change it, it's all about your mouth. Being in Mitzrayim is pera, paro. Paro is pera, bad mouth. When you have a bad mouth, uh, you guys know how to have a bad mouth, right? You have <laughs> all the, not even say curses sometimes, but yes, you when you losing it, you lose it on both sides, right? We know how to start out everything, but we have a bad mouth and criticizing, and cursing, threading, and and making and calling the names. It's such a pity. It's such a such a little girl. It's such a little Shut up! How did you call me? How can I call my parents? How can I call the police? How can I call mom? Are you gonna call the neighbor because I? Yeah, she's remembering everything. She has, she came from the bone. She remember everything, whatever you write on the bone. It's gonna take a lot of time to take it out. Only maybe hypnosis, 10 sessions. You can take it out. <laughs> but you never forget, it's a hard drive, someone in the clouds forever. There's <laughs> hidden clouds. There's a files that's hidden from all the hackers in the world cannot take it out. Because you say something. I did, I told you, I coached a couple in LA. 55 hours, 55 hours, five days. I coached them all day long. In the last day, we did the integration and we have to come, everything we learn and do the practical way and whatever. In the middle of the process, when I'm jumping and screaming and 
everybody needs to stop it. She said, I can take it, we can do it. I don't feel, so what happened? No, I remember something that he told me 35 years ago. What? Are you out of your mind? You spent $10,000 and now in the last day, before let me go, you feel, no, she can't forgive him. I said, I'm sorry, I have a flight in two hours. What should I do? I flew back to New Jersey. After four days, I flew back to LA to do hypnosis for her, to take it out, the film, whatever happened there. Took me a while. I hope it works. <laughs> but, <laughs> but whatever you say, any bad words, any bad names, you don't have the respect. That's why I'm Israel. When they were in Egypt, they were in a place that's slavery, that they don't have, they don't see anything above beside themselves. They're always in survival mode. Survival mode in a place that they're not creating anything. That's a bad relationship, toxic relationship. They're always in survival. Ah, we all go ups, ups and down, ups and down, ups and down. Not saying that always uh, perfect, but at least the normal, to be normal, to, to, to spend time with each other, so that's the place that we, in Egypt, that we criticize each other. We have a bad mouth instead of, instead of perish and admire and compliment each other, instead of finding the right way how to say what a beautiful, how you look good, how you working so good. I'm so happy, so lucky that you have it and you're working and you're paying the bills and everything good. When is the last time you say it? If you don't say it today to your friends, you're not going to say it to your future husband, your future wife. If you're not appreciate the, the, the stuff when you get up in a place and say thank you for that, for that, whatever, any appreciation, you always, there is a people that having the best events, best kiddush, the best place, you just run away and then, hello, bye. What? Say something. Train yourself to say for stupid things, thank you. Do not appreciate today, not just to Hashem, that for, of course I have to be grateful, but a human being to be appreciated. Right? So that's kind of a toxic relationship that we don't want to be in Mitzrayim because when you get out of Egypt, you free yourself, you open the ocean, and you take in whatever it needs to believe and to you take in someone to take you out of Egypt. Being in Egypt, it's to continue to suffer a relationship year after year after year after year, not doing anything. You're not getting divorced, and you're not bringing any, anybody outside to help you, to elevate you. Like Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm saying, couldn't go out of Egypt without Moshe Rabbeinu. You have to have a rabbi, you have to have a coach, you have to have a marriage consultant, you have to have someone that help you. It's not... It's not embarrassing to go to, to someone, to a therapy. Today, everybody going to therapy, right? So to be in Mitzrayim, to be in a relationship when you have so much sin and so much unpureness that when you're not taking care of your husbands, or you're not taking care of each other's needs, so people doing whatever they do outside and they're taking their needs outside. That's being in Egypt. To be in a healthy relationship is to be in a place to Kedusha, Tara, family purity, to build a house for Hashem, to love each other, to work together towards Hashem, uh, towards something that help you to, to uh, you have you give up, you have the name of Hashem in front of you. I said to people, don't look in each other's eyes. Look together in one goal, in one thing that can elevate you. When the, the time is not going to be good, you always continue to do it. You do it for Hashem. You wash the dishes for Hashem. You wash the floor for Hashem. You're doing it for Hashem. You respect Him for Hashem. you taking care of His needs for Hashem. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about if you have a cheshek, or if you feel to do it, you're not feel to do it. There's a Rambam who says all the six needs of a man of the six needs of a woman. When the Rambam said, in order to have a healthy relationship, you have to admire your husband like a king girl, like a Caesar. Like, come on, monsieur. Like that. You have to bow to him. Right? See next to him. And see what, what's bothering, bothering him. 
But if you don't learn those things, don't learn the tools, how can you, how can you want to get married? Rabbi, I want to get married. Are you ready for marriage? You're not ready to, to handle, you're going to get married to yourself? If you're going to find a person like yourself, you're going to marry to yourself? No. <laughs> so come on. Always test this. You're going to get married to yourself like your financial, spiritual, emotional, mental, all the seven years in your life. For so one to ten, how much you have? How much percent? Two, three, whatever. Come to me. I'm going to show you in five minutes if you're ready to get married. Most of the people are not ready. They're not ready. If you're not working consistent, and you think if you get married, you're going to be happy, you're not going to be challenged, or it's the second marriage, or no, you just get, it's not just about to get married, it's to stay married. Because marriage, it, uh, marriage institution it's, can be the most pleasant and, and beautiful and pleasant place. It can be the most destructive and horrible place that you don't want to be there. If you're not doing it the right way right so when you being in the place that you in egypt you want to get in a place that you support like you are want to be in a place that you always believe that you're going to get out of egypt you support your husband people going through uh, difficult stuff okay your husband going through difficult now you you want be supportive Help him, you're gonna get there, you're gonna do it, everything okay. Like Miriam, but because of the woman we get out of Egypt, because they believe, she said to her father, You killing the babies because you don't believe, you believe what's going to happen now. But the woman has the ability to support, to see the big picture, to really be there. You see, even the Gemara said, when the woman saw their husband working so hard, they don't want to come home and, 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 and be with them. And, Nothing. What they do, they take took care of themselves, put makeup. The Gemara said they they, they they took a shower. They they take care of themselves to be attractive enough to be with them and to have more babies and to grow up. And uh, I'm Israel. Why? Why the Gemara needs to, to tell us that? Because they make all the effort to take them out from the the slavery, from the hard work, and to help them to build their house. To show that even in Egypt you can you can build your house if you want to want to disconnect from the Egyptian people. If you're surrounded with Egyptian people, toxic people, people that always parties, always been in all over the place, what kind of relationship? Well, what are you going to single events for secular single events if they're not really the person that you want to look for? You want to be in a place that someone dances every night with girls? Yes. If that's the kind of relationship you want, you want to have someone that sleep with the entire city for the last 20 years, you want to have a girl that she's all over the place and no. So there is a way which kind of relationship you want to build unless you want to go there. Then nobody promised you you're going to be healthy and sustainable relationship. And when you have and know how to build a relationship, you can win everything. You see the multi-millionaire people, billionaire people, they have all the businesses in the world, they're successful all over, but in relationship they fail. Most of the most the most mentors and people that have everything in relationship they fail because this is the most difficult things to, to do and to stay because it's a mirroring. It's a mirroring to show you who the real you. It's a mirroring to show you what you need to work on, right? But that's why we have all the best jokes about relationship, right? What is the best jokes? It's about relationship. Like two people came to the, the doctor and they did the blood test and they were around their 50s. And they got, after one week, they got the result. And the husband realized the result, he got the same result that like his wife and he asked the doctor, maybe it's the... Something going on. The doctor said, how come you have the, the same result of blood test? So the husband said, she sucked my blood for 50 years. Of course we have the same blood, blood test. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> or like a person that he went to the flea market to buy a parent that he can talk in the house. So he spent $600 and then after that he came back. After one week, and he said, I want to return it. He said, why do you want to return it? He said, it's a female, it's not a male. 
how do you know if the, the female parrot is not a male? He said, instead of repeating after me, she's arguing with me. She's only a female. So I don't want it. So all the best jokes, because everybody going through the same thing and everybody feels the same. So this Shabbat, we're going to have a big Shabbaton about our relationship with Rabbi Kabbas. And of course, I'm going to talk also. Everybody's invited to join us. So that's the mindset of Egypt is in relationship to get out of it is to have a clear mindset and you have when you know how to manage your time for the job for yourself for the house for your kids for other people to be patient all the time not to be stressful if you're stressful and you're bringing your stressfulness to the house if you tell you you're depressed some of the people they have this face of of, of, of sadness of emptiness of they're not happy with their life, not happy. How do you want a wife to look at you? You have a face like 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 a goat. Well, what do you want that people look at you? How are you gonna sit in the in the day? You think you're gonna fake it? <laughs> it's not working. People feel the energy. If you want to get out of it, if each of you to have a big energy to 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 free yourself from this mindset. I'm not in this place. I, I don't want to stay in this place. I want to be in a place that I'm working on myself and preparing myself and cleaning my clean my vessel in order to get the light from Hashem that this is my future's devout that waits for each one of us. Okay? So so that's why so that's why when you be able to work in your relationship, when you find the right relationship, when you're preparing yourself and you want to work on it, you, or you find someone else to help you, to guide you, to, to prepare you, to show you what is that, you'll be able also to, to get out of Egypt financially. Why? We asked before, everybody going through challenges financially. And the question is why? Why Hashem is not giving us whatever we ask for? Why Hashem is not giving us the money that we need? Why? Why we need to go through it? Why we need even to work? Hashem, you're my father. You want to give me. You know what I need. So give me for you, you give me my breath. You take care of me. You took care of my 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 heart beating. What's the problem to give me two million dollars? That's it. And then just for two years. But what what's the problem? Why do we need? I'm talking about the entire history of rabbis and. In the biggest Tanaim, the biggest of all, you see, even they have all the Torah, all the Mitzvot, and they still struggle. They still have a problem with financial, and they still kind of feel like in Egypt, you see, biggest uh, stories of Tanaim, how they suffer, Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa, when, when he was all the world getting the chef and the, the abundance, the parasa, because of Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa, and he used to eat only from Friday to Friday. He didn't have money. The Gemara said about Rabbi Nachman. Uh, 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 that he used to take a loan every single morning, take a loan to take care of the bills and to buy food, and he used to teach and learn all day, and then he give it back in the in the night. He let us again, he didn't have money, he used to cut trees and get one dollar for the morning, and he cut it half a dollar to to buy bread to his kids and to his wife and half to, to, to pay for the shoe. Even that time they pay for the shoe. So to learn Torah. So we have so many stories, and 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 the question is why? There's many, many schools. We'll learn about it, and maybe we will do another series of classes about how to open the gates in the heaven for abundance, because this is very interesting to know the keys, the keys how to free ourselves. It's not about to be free, not to work at all. That's also a curse. Sometimes Shem can give you, okay, you, you really want? He can give you 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 million dollars, but what are you going to do? You're going to do only have a lot because the money is not about the money. Because the money only magnifies, the money is Kesef. Kesef is like a silver. And silver is like a mirroring who you are. When you have money, it shows who you really are. If you're a good person and you, you really wants to give and you and you pray to Hashem, Hashem, please give me, I want to give more. Even today, you have a thousand, you have a hundred, you're going to give 50, you're going to give 20. But if you have 
a thousand dollar, you're not giving a hundred or five hundred. Even you have a hundred thousand dollar, you're not going to give anything. That shows who you are. So Hashem having every person have his own tikkun, his own mazal, his own luck to, and Hashem have the cheshbon, the calculation, what exactly to give to who and why, right? And we have also cheshbonot from a different life from recognition when we have the class by recognition, how we have the tikkun from a previous of life that we come here as the place, some of the people that suffering are poor people because when they have money, they didn't use it in the right way. So what is the right way to free yourself from Mitzrayim? These two ways, okay? These two ways, there's many, many, can talk for 20 hours about it, but but really, really for, for something short to give you uh, before we're gonna do the meditation, um, but there is a two ways how to free yourself from Egypt, okay? Because being in Egypt is not about how much money you have. You can make $20,000 a month and still be in Egypt. You, you can make $50,000 a month and still be in Egypt. Being in Egypt is to be in a place that you work so hard and you work all this and you're so addicted to work and you always have stressful you don't let other people to do the work that you can do. You don't manage the business like you're supposed to. You always want to do the business by yourself and you feel that you are the one who make the money. That's being in Egypt. Not only that, being in Egypt and make money and it's not about how much you make. Being in the place that you make money, it's about your identity, who you are. If you have a mindset of Egypt, right? Even you're gonna make whatever you are, you're gonna spend it. You don't have the mindset of being rich to multiply it, to invest, reinvest it in your business and make much more. You don't let yourself and let your money make money when you're sleeping. You're still in Egypt. You're in a place that always, whatever I make, I spend. I give you an example. If you have the identity that I am worth $10,000, okay? I am 10, right? This is, Mindset of a poor mindset, right? Maybe for some of the people it's a rich mindset, but 10,000, 10,000, let's say it's average. It's not big, it's not small, but let's say I'm 10,000, I'm, I'm, I live in Egypt. What happens if you make 8,000 this month and you have three more days to complete the month? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to make sure and find a way to call the entire friends that you know and make sure that you're gonna make a ten thousand dollars in order to pay the bills and and, and survive the, the, the month, right? Because your mindset is ten thousand. I have to reach there no matter what. But what happened if something happened and you got bonus from your boss or from uh, someone that donate or give you or whatever, any kind of or from, from your father, for your family member? You got 15,000 this month. What are you gonna do if you're in Egypt? You're taking, you're gonna make sure to spend this 5,000 to stay with the 10,000. Yes or no? Who is familiar with what I'm talking about, right? Because you're still poor. That's your mindset. I cannot have more than that, right? <laughs> yes or no? That's why if I'm making 14 or 20, I'm going to make sure to spend it. Let's go to, 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 to vacation. Let's spend for a stupid TV that we barely can even use it. Let's buy a car. Let's uh, go to vacation. Let's go to restaurants. Let's buy some. Let's... You're going to make sure to spend it somewhere, right? Because you in your mind is to, to stay with this mindset. I'm here only to pay bills. That's my standard. But if you have a rich mindset, wow, I got a $5,000 more, I'm gonna make sure to invest in how can I hire someone or to take care of my business or to invest in something or to save it in order to continue to grow. But to be in Egypt, did you never be able to save, to keep, to having in a place that you have something for the time that you're not gonna have. That's a poor mindset. That's most of the people poor and struggle all the time, right? And you can, I'm talking about even people that make make 50 or 100,000, they always struggle. 
I said, well, what's the problem? Show me, show me your, your, your statement. You're making a lot of money. Well, where's the money? I don't know. It's going away. I don't know. He's making a stupid investment. He's losing it because he's, he, he cannot have it. So you have to change your identity. I'm not a poor guy anymore. I'm not in Egypt. I am a rich guy. I am worth 50,000. I am worth 100. Yes, I'm willing to make a million dollars this year. Right? Every person have to have, not just to change it, your identity, and to change it by, you remember, by say it over and over again, like we learn about the affirmation, and to believe in it. If you don't believe in it, you're going to say it until tomorrow. You don't believe you'll be able to make it. But Hashem have all the ability. So Hashem said, look, this guy is in Egypt. He's not even believing me. He's still happy when he makes five or three or five or 10 or 15,000. But he, I can make him more. I'm not going to open the zipper to give you all the money that you already have. You don't believe because Hashem's midah can get midah. And sometimes Hashem can give you only if you get the 10 makot. Hashem can give you. But only if you get him, if you have the schut, if you have the schut, Hashem give you without suffering. If you don't have the schut, you have a lot of judgment because of you making holes. You're in Egypt, you being unpure, you're doing avirot, you're doing bad things, you're complaining, you can hurt your business. If you're not appreciate the $100, if you're not appreciate what you have, you're not grateful every single day, Hashem, thank you, that I have a job. People complaining about their job, about their boss, about the places that they're working, in, about the money that they're making, you don't appreciate nothing. Do you in Egypt? I'm not going to give you more. It's not a mindset of abundance. In order to make money, in order to free yourself, you have to have abundance to appreciate. But more than that, it's not just to appreciate, to have abundance, to change your identity. It's also to give others. That's what me, Sarai, you want to get out of Egypt? Sadi, it's tzedakah. If you're not willing to give tzedakah every single month, not only when the rabbi asks you, only when the rabbi has a campaign, only when the organization and anybody is asking you, no, you give. You give, you give, you give, you find a family, 10 families, 20 families, whatever, you feed them, you help them, you care about others. You always open your heart, you hate to give. That's the difference. When you're poor, doesn't matter how much you make. If you're not willing to give, okay, you can give 10%. This is the minimum, minimum 10%. Automatically, this is, belongs to Hashem. Automatically, this belongs to Hashem. Not willing to give, you're still going to eat Egypt. You're going to make 50,000. You're not willing to give. Because if you have 3,000, if you're not giving 300, when you make 30,000, you're not going to make it. So if you're not willing to spend, to believe in Hashem, that this is Hashem who wants you to uplift me, I want you to, to bring me much more, to take the, the tzaddik, the mitzrayim, Hashem is not uplifting. If you're taking the mitzrayim, the tzedakah, you have the word merim. Hashem will uplift in you to the place that you never thought that this is exist right so start today to give tzedakah you can't give more give 100 give 20 200 whatever you are you are give to people sell them whatever it is whatever you want you don't have to someone to push you to talk about i'm talking about it all the time because and, and and you think that it's it's, it's easy for me no it's, it's it's all every week every week and every day but if you're still in Egypt, you think all the time, I have, I don't have, I have to pay the bills, uh, wait, it's coming up. I'm not gonna give him, uh, well, I'm gonna make excuses. No, shut up, give. But it's my last 300, it's my last 500, shut up, give. Because I'm there. You believe in me that I'm there, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna explain you, I'm gonna make sure to take care of you. So that's what people really, really, really messed up. And we all fell on the same thing that we always come back to Egypt. We cannot free ourselves because only when you open here, potech et yadecha, et yadecha, et yadecha, it's a plural way. Not potech my hand, yadecha, Hashem, open his hand also. Hashem has so much abundance to give us whatever we need, right? But people hold themselves like that, even they commit to give. They always need someone to call, call, call what about your uh, donation, whatever you can uh, No, give. Shut up and give. Shut the the the, the, the voice that telling you don't give, don't uh, 
give next month, next week, next month. No, shut up. That belongs to you. Free yourself from Egypt. And you're all laughing and you think that I'm crazy, but try it. Because you don't believe in God. You believe in God that he's like that. If you don't willing to give, you believe in God that he's like that. If you're willing to give above what you're capable of, and if you're willing to give 20%, this is a different God. And above 20%, it's a totally different God that can take you to places that you can't even imagine. And I'm not even talking about this gulot, how much the tzedakah can save you from suffering, from a court, from painful, from problems in your life, in your sicknesses, in your everything that you're going through. When you're willing to give, you'll be able, but God says, this is me. So we have two ways how to get out of Egypt. Rabbi Nachman says, Rabbi Nachman says that Hashem wants every single Jew to be rich. Not to get Parnasa, to be rich, right? To be rich, if you take in the mem from its time, it's mem rich, right? Across the beauty of it, mem rich, right? Hashem wants you to be rich. That's why Hashem took us out from Egypt. He gave each one of us 90, 90 donkeys. Why do I need 90 donkeys? I have nothing to do with it. No, I want you to be rich. Too. To feel that you, you have everything. To feel that you already have. That you feel that you, you're worth it. You're capable. You deserve it. So you have two ways. Oh, Hashem, willing to work with you based on your mitzvot on Avivot. So the Gemara said, every person have his mazal. Mazal, which means his uh, luck, right? Sometimes you have a lack of, of rich luck. This is the above luck. It's called mazal elion. And we have mazal tachton. Mazal elion, whatever you born. The Malach, the angel, take the seed and say, Hashem, this is going to be a rich guy or poor guy. Whatever you're going to do, he's not, he's not going to help you. You can't change the, the up-level mazal. But the low level mazal, it depends on your action. Let's say a chef deposit in you a million dollars in the up level mazal. Now, the low level, it, it's like a zipper. So you wash your hand, you open the zipper, boom. You bring in much more money. You take the cut Amazon, much more money. You respect your wife, the Gemara said, you respect your wife, you get in more money. You, you, you learn to lie, you get more money. You give tzedakah, whoop, the zipper all over, right? You actually withdraw from the bazaar, the luck that you have already as a deposit on you. But there is another, this is one level. To continue to believe, to do Torah, mitzvot, to pray about it. There is schoolot to pray. We talk about it so many times, you can see. I have three classes about it in my channel. Um, abundance is mindset, how to... So, but they will have another, another level, what Rabbi Nachman says. He says like that. He says, he said, Torah la mitvah. Rabbi Nachman says, if a person stand up with himself and pray to Hashem, like I am your son, son of a king of the world, and I believe that you have all the ability to provide all my needs, and I feel that like I am deserving it 100%. If you have 100% to believe in Bitachon and trust to Hashem, that you feel like you're his baby. Hashem is taking care of me. If not, I'm going to die. If I'm not going to have my house, if I'm not going to have my, my needs, if I can't function. And you feel that Hashem is your father, Hashem can open the gates in heaven, even if you're not deserved, even if you're dirty, even if you have all the problems in the world, Hashem will willing to give you. That's the level that you can free yourself from Egypt in one second without doing anything. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that not to keep the Torah mitzvot, but your Paranasa not depending on that. So your Paranasa, you have to free yourself from Egypt by believing that I can make it. Believing that my Paranasa is on the corner, my business, my, my, my career, whatever, I can open everything. We are the one who block it. We are the one who, who question it. We are the one who have the doubt. That's why Hashem is not opening. What, what, are you, what are you trying? What are you waiting for? Go! Jump into the ocean. Take the risk. Call. 
make your effort. I'm, I'm, I'm going to open this, the, the ocean for you. Right? That's why Nachshon ben Amadam, when he went to open the ocean. So Am Yisrael, when they left Egypt, they thought, oh, we're rich. We have 90 donkeys, 90 cars of Uber full of diamonds. Hashem said, no, 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 this is just the beginning. This is just the peanuts. Whatever they got when they left Egypt, it was the peanuts. The Gemara said, Tore za'av na'aselak im nekudot akasef. The Gemara said, whatever they got from Egypt, it's just nekudot, it's just that of silver. But the real money they got out of on the ocean from the diamonds that were stuck on the carriage of the Egyptian people, that's the real money. And they got 10 times like, like enormous, enormous abundance of gold and diamonds that you can't even imagine. Sometimes you get out, oh, wow, I'm free, wow, I got, wow, I got, wow, I can open the gates for you that you can't even imagine. Just jump to the ocean, believe, and say it, and do something about it. So that's what we have the ability to do it, to free ourselves, also in relationship, also in Parnassa, by taking care of others, Get out of, of your me. Be connected to Hashem. Have your emunah, bitachon, and, and develop the relationship. Develop the relationship between you and God. That God loves you. God wants to give you. There's nothing to that can block it. Only we, by opening, say tehillim and pray to Hashem. And when I see people finish on that two minutes, you have so much places that you can pray to Hashem. Hashem Take it, be naive, be like your baby, Hashem, I have nowhere to go, nowhere to ask. If you trust other people, this guy's going to take me, this guy's going to connect me, this guy's going to help me, and this um, one of the stupid things that we think that <laughs> we have the cheshbon, no, they have, because of that, because Hashem showing the boom, 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 <laughs> Hashem, believe me, <laughs> sometimes I, 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 I think, oh, because of this person, I'm going to have the conversation, I'm going to meet this guy, I'm going to go to this business, he's going to be there. You go, you're disappointed, you're disappointed, you're disappointed. And the Yeshua, the salvation comes from the simple people, from the places that you have no idea, Hashem said, just trust me, just surrender. Just surrender. And that's the key that we're going to start the meditation right now, for five minutes. That we, in order to free yourself from Egypt, we said, that Egypt is a place that you have ego. The place that you feel that you are the one who make, you are the one who created, you are the one in charge. Hashem said, ah, you are the one, boom, 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 all the makot, all the plagues. But when you surrender, like in the matzans, you have the anava, you have the humbleness, you feel Hashem, I don't know how to make money, I don't know how to make my wife happy, I don't know how to make what she do, to get my she do. No, because I'm a pretty girl, because I'm a handsome guy. Can I find my she do? Yeah, I'm, I'm, when, when I'm going to go on the market. <laughs> In two seconds, I'm going to go. Yeah, everybody. No, no, no. I don't know how to do it. Because if you think that you know, Hashem showing you that you can have all the qualities, you're not going to get anything. It's just surrender. When you surrender, you get everything from Hashem, and Hashem will free us from Egypt. Please understand. Okay? So, uh, we're going to go for five minutes of meditation. Close your eyes, everybody. I want to take you to a journey together that we're going to free ourselves and let ourselves get in out of Egypt. I want to take you to a place that you're going to imagine yourself in your power of imagination to see how Hashem is the only one who can take you out of Egypt. And he just walking and he just attracting to his light. And you free yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, health, relationship, and financially. Everything, everything, everything you just give to Hashem and let him to be in charge. I want you for right now, take a deep breath. I want you to take a journey that you see how Hashem is the one who take you out of Egypt by connecting to the name of Hashem. 
Am Israel in Egypt, they couldn't listen to Moshe Rabbeinu. They couldn't take themselves from Egypt because they have a short breath. They didn't know how to breathe. They didn't know how to accept. That's why they didn't listen to the voice of God. So I want you to imagine yourself standing and see the light of Hashem. And while you're taking the breath, take a deep breath, you imagine the youth of God. Yud is the Chokhmah. Chokhmah is the wisdom, is the Bitul of Hashem. Chokhmah. I want you to imagine yourself connecting to the Yud of God. See the letter Yud. Imagine it above you. Connecting to Hashem, to the name of God by surrendering, by having the ability to surrender, to have the humbleness to understand that I don't know anything, I'm not questioning anything. I just let myself to surrender 100% with God. God is the only one who is taking care of me. I am nothing beside God. This is the Ain, the point of nothing. There is nothing beside God. Take another breath and let the youth, the surrender, the light of God through the letter youth going into your body. And when you hold your breath, you let the, the light get in, into yourself and it flashes through the hay. The hay, it is it flashes, which means going all over your mind, your shoulders, your body. You see the light of Hashem expanding all over yourself. And you let yourself from the place of surrender that you're not just in your mind, go all over your body. This is when you hold the breath and now let it go. And imagine the letter Vav. The letter Vav represents the six midot, the Amshacha. You see the light go all your, inside your spine inside your spine and all the light of Hashem is going into yourself, into your body until your toes and all your blood bringing the Shefa from the six Lord Chesed, Gevura, Tiferet Netzach, Hod, Yesod everything is going through your spine that represents the Vav and you see the light go over you and you fulfill yourself with the light of God I am the godly power. I have the energy. Everything that I have is my God. Imagine yourself that the light of Hashem heal your health, your soul, your pain, your suffering. All the lights of God going through the youth to the head and expanding himself all over through the Vach. And now he's going again with the head all over the body. All over now. Ask yourself when you're full of light, when you believe in Hashem 100% and you let Hashem to be in charge, you let Hashem to be controlling, you see the light of Hashem, you surrender 100%, and you believe in Hashem that He's the only one who can take me out of Egypt. Ask yourself, what do you see? What do you feel when God is behind you? God is within you. What do you experience? I want you to accept it, to accept it, the place that you are, and feel that you're secure, that you're safe, that you love. Feel that your zivuk, your shidduch is behind the corner. Feel that you should survive your relationship is going to be better. Feel that your parasite is going to be healed. Imagine the business that you want. Imagine the place that you want. Imagine your boss, the people around you that are going to bring you more shepherd. Everything that comes from Hashem. I want you to see your body heal from the world, from the lights of Hashem that come from His letters, Yud and Hey and Vav and Hey. I want you to imagine, to accept it, the place that you are, and feel that you're so lucky, you're so loved, you're so grateful. You can't even have the experience to express your love. 
your appreciation to God. I want you to connect and take another deep breath and see again the huge and surrender again. And now to see the hay or the lights again coming to you, another level to surrender again. Only Hashem, only Hashem is taking care of you. You get a soul road with my partners, with my son, with my wife, my husband, the people around me. My soul, everything that I'm going through is the best for me. Feel that you are the king, the son of the king. Feel that you deserve it to get the abundance. You deserve it to get your shidduch. See your, the name of Hashem going to be above your house. Accept it and commit to yourself to build your house in the way of God to bring in the shinah, the presence of God, because there's no other happiness. Of pleasure besides spiritual relationship with Hashem. See the Geula, the redemption on the corner. Feel the, the connect to the light of Mashiach, of Geula, that Hashem redeem you. Redeem you from your pain, redeem you from your doubts, redeem you from your suffering, redeem you from all the problems that you're going through. And everything will be okay. Listen to the voice of God. Everything will be okay. Now I want you to see all the name of God, Yud and Hey and Vav and Hey, connecting to you at once. See your life coming out of you. See the money come to you because you deserve it. You're worth it. Hashem is your father. Hashem is the king and a father that loves you and has the ability to give you everything. See it happening. I want you to imagine your future husband, future wife, to see you under the chuppah. See everything happening. Everything is good. See yourself, free yourself, and imagine yourself left Egypt and going through the ocean. Open the ocean. Hashem, open the ocean for you. See yourself carrying a lot of money with you, a lot of chef of abundance. See yourself releasing yourself from the stress, from the anxiety, from the anger, from the ego, from the depressions, all the bad things you live. Leave it alone. But that's why we have the ability to accept it, to believe in Hashem, and to let Hashem to take care of us. Now be present. Take another deep breath. Let it go. You let it go. All the bad things that happened in the past. You forgive to everyone that hurts you. Forgive to everyone that did everything for you and you set yourself for free. And see yourself accepting, bringing, and you see the salvation coming to you. There's another shot. Take a few moments to open your eyes slowly, slowly. And be present in the reality. See yourself in different reality from now, full of shefa of abundance, full of love and warmth, and see the salvation coming to you this week, tonight, tomorrow, a few days from now, everything will be okay. You just let it go. Let it go. Be happy and be grateful. Commit to yourself three things that you're going to be grateful for today. Three things that you're going to do. Who is the one person that you're going to help him? Who is the one person that you're going to take care of him? What are you going to do with Chesed, with Sadaka? Something that can take you out of Egypt. And believe me, Hashem, Bezad Hashem, fulfill our wishes and give us whatever we need. Bezad Hashem, Amen, Amen. Open the light. No, the other one? Yes? No, the right one? Yes. How was the meditation? <laughs> okay, there's not Hashem. Hashem will fulfill our wishes and take us out of Egypt. Thank you all for coming. I wish you there's not Hashem success and happiness and Shabbat and Zibub and Parnasa. Everything Hashem will bring you, there's not Hashem. Amen, Amen. 
Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Bezat Hashem, we'll see you next week. Thank you for uh, the sponsoring for this class. Whoever wants to sponsor the next class, let me know. And whoever wants to sign up for the Shabbaton this week, the Shabbaton, the Shabbaton, the Shabbaton, and we're going to have a dinner on Friday and Shabbat morning. So let me know. Whoever wants to join our WhatsApp group in the class, also reach out to me after the class. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you.